to my knowledge, there's nobody on YouTube talking about second channels. There's not a video out there that I know about that has addressed this phenomenon that all YouTubers, or at least successful YouTubers, have a second channel where they put their slop. Now, a quick Google search or a quick YouTube search could prove me wrong. Maybe there is a video out there with millions of views by a pretty well-known YouTuber all about second channels. But the whole point of this channel, my second channel, is that I don't do research, I don't put in the effort, I don't even write a script, I just kind of ramble. I'm amazed I've made it this long in one take without saying, uh... I bring up the fact that I didn't look that up beforehand because that's a huge part of the appeal of this channel to me. I look at that, already a cut. I couldn't get through more than that. Anyway, fuck, I'm gonna have to cut again. On my last community post promoting this second channel, I got a comment asking me why I don't just put all of my content onto one channel. Wouldn't it make more sense to maximize views that way? If I have an idea, why not take advantage of it and put it on the main channel? And then they immediately were like, oh, never mind, I get it. But it's a good question. Why don't we YouTubers just put everything onto one channel? What makes this video, for example, different from my kinds of kindness video that I just put out? There's the obvious fact that I put close to zero effort into this. I don't usually record my face because it doesn't feel like enough work for me. I like to put in the effort of finding something more interesting than my face to put over what I'm saying, but for the second channel, you know, we'll, this'll, this'll do. To explain why I love second channels so much, I need to do a quick backtrack and explain my own relationship with YouTube. I've been uploading videos onto YouTube since I was in the seventh grade. My very first video I ever uploaded was uh, an edit of me doing trampoline tricks and, and different parkour. I wish I had access to it, but I think I deleted it, and that is one of the dumbest things I've ever done in my entire life. The song was like a, some Lil Wayne song. It's, it's amazing. I, I, it's so sad that I can't find it. But that was the kind of stuff I used to put up onto YouTube when I was just a little boy. I, I'd never been more fascinated by anything in my life up until then. I remember the first time I uploaded, I just refreshed the page over and over again until it hit the 301 mark and I had to sit back. So I was like, I think I broke it. No one was actually watching the video. It was just me refreshing over and over again. <laughs> It was really sad. And I got so addicted, I would make videos like pretty much every week. Anytime I had any idea for a video, I would put it up. And then I got really serious about it. And I was like, I want more people to see this. I made a, a documentary with my cousin and his friends. And I was I put so much effort into it, even though it was just this little 15 minute piece of junk that I, at one point on Facebook, I posted, please just click the link. You don't need to watch the video. That counts as a view. Just please. I just wanted to hit a thousand views. It was it was just so important to me that I saw my video with that number. It's adorable to look back on. And the point is, I've, I've always just loved the idea of making videos. I, I find the, the process of making videos so fun. It's what led me to going to film school. And then that quickly evolved into filmmaking and getting into cinema and movies. And that's just, you know, we, we all know how that ended up. But that's what's crazy. My love for filmmaking started with YouTube videos, which is such a new thing. I, I don't feel like a, a lot of older people have that experience, but that's that's how my love for film started. I It's not just the process of filming a video on your phone it's the act of uploading it that's what's so exciting to me that you can put something out there and you don't know who is gonna see it there's some legitimacy associated with a video being on YouTube rather than just on your phone it's like look at this piece this singular idea it's why I love the fact that Joel Haver calls a lot of his videos movies I do think a lot of videos can count as films if you want to call them that my shit technically is like documentary. I'm not gonna say that, but you could say that. It took me a very long time until things started to get traction on YouTube. I was never actively trying to blow up on YouTube, I, but it was a dream. I cannot lie to you. I always wanted to be YouTube famous. And then I did a video on La La Land and it did really well. And I realized, you know what? This is the formula. People will watch this. I really enjoyed making that video. I kept making them every week as a hobby on, on the side of schoolwork. And six months later, I got my first Squarespace sponsorship and the rest is history. I've been very lucky. I feel like anyone who makes it on YouTube and is able to keep going, most importantly, is like winning the lottery. It's a, it's so hard. I mean, it might be easier, fuck. Maybe it's easier these days with knowing how to play the algorithm. That wasn't really a thing when I was coming up on YouTube. But still, even if you do that right, you have to keep a consistent audience going. You have to be able to do it 
often enough that a sponsor can be like, I will pay you uh, a, a certain deal so that I can make you, give you a r money. <laughs> Getting one viral video, you know, if you play the system right, if you do the math, it can happen. That's It's not the hardest thing in the world, but keeping it going is what makes it hard. And I have worked very hard to keep my channel going, to keep things relevant, to keep things interesting. And I've been lucky enough to do it for, I don't even know, like six, I, six years now? That feels long and short at the same time. But the point is, in the process of doing that, it somehow went from what I was originally doing back in 2010 to a business. I fucking downloaded Notion to keep track of videos. Like that's a that's absurd to have a little task in my Notion thing being like finish the Bo is afraid review. It's like what? That's what you got to do if I want to treat this like a business. I have to take it seriously. But making videos on YouTube in the way that I'm doing it right now is wildly different to how I used to make them. Even this video, as authentic as I'm trying to be about it, is vastly different from the videos I used to upload onto this channel, like the backflips one. I just rewatched that. That's a phenomenal video on my part. I gotta give myself credit for that. And that's where the second channel thing comes in. That is why I love second channels. I know a lot of YouTubers turn their second channels into their own thing and they blossom into being just as big as their main channel and get sponsors and then that turns into just another side of the business. But I'm talking more about YouTubers like Big Joel or uh, Joel Haver. I don't know why I'm only thinking of Joel's right now. <laughs> man carrying things second channel, woman carrying man, where he occasionally reviews movies with his girlfriend. But you get the point. All of these channels upload what I consider old school YouTube videos. Just sit in front of the camera, ramble, talk about whatever the hell you feel like talking about. Like Jenna Marbles type shit. And that's the kind of stuff that I love. That's the stuff that I feel makes YouTube super unique. It's like there's no other platform where you can do something like that. Nothing like that existed before YouTube. I mean, now you may see it on like TV, I guess like news channels and, and like news coverage, like MSNBC and all that bullshit is like basically just people, you know, talking to John Oliver. Look at that, that's, that's basically YouTube. But there's something about the rambliness and the lack of preparation and, and just the on the fly, I have a thought, film it, put it online that I really love. I love the fact that it's really caught on and it's given a lot of YouTubers a place to just keep enjoying the process of making videos, not content. I didn't, again, I didn't write a script. I didn't really prepare anything to say about this. I just wanted to gush about it. Quick side story. A few years ago, there was a certain sponsor that I'm not going to name that got really mad because I did a type of video that I don't usually do on my channel without being too specific because I don't want to call them out like stylistically it was just very different from what I usually put on my channel I didn't see any issue with that it was still a video that I made I still wrote a script I did the sponsor exactly how they wanted it uh, but then they got really mad because they were like this is not what we expected we we know you you as a certain type of youtuber you usually do a certain type of content and then you put our ad on this weird experiment of yours the video even did well it wasn't like an underperformed i know sponsors get mad at that but the video did pretty decent i was like what is the big what is the big deal they were mad because it didn't fit the type of content that i was making on my channel before and after that it just it stood out and that was a real uh crazy thing to happen because i'm like is the point of youtube not to just experiment and throw shit out and and do whatever i know that there's some sort of pressure with hitting views but stylistically you could do whatever the fuck you want i i don't really want to work with that sponsor again for obvious reasons i think that that is a crazy exception i haven't had that experience with anybody else but as i've mentioned in other videos nothing matters nothing matters over here and i don't mean that just as far as like what i say is off the cuff ramble bullshit but also the types of videos you never know what you're gonna get you never know when they're gonna end it's great